we did it. We've teamed up, and together we've created something special. We are the Idaho Underground Sports Network, and we're changing the game. We're covering Idaho high school sports in a way that you haven't seen before. Together, we'll be providing weekly breakdowns and recaps while helping uncover Idaho's top talents at a deeper level. Trust us, you want to be part of this. Boise Sports Talk, EBC Media, and the Game Time Guru bring you Gem Session. Let's get to work. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of Gym Session. This is the Gym Session podcast brought to you by the Idaho Underground Sports Network. I'm Shane Larson, also known as the Game Time Guru, alongside Ty Spangenberg from Boise Sports Talk and AJ Niebergall from EBC Media, who is not with us right now, is Lane from Cherry Films, and we got Malachi from Meyer Media. They're all part of the network as well. But just want to do a couple of housekeeping items and remind you guys to subscribe to our channel and share this with your friends and family. we got some tourney talk coming your way today with districts and state and we've got a couple things we want to get off our chest and kind of clear the air about today so you're going to enjoy that um real quick shout out to everybody who's helped us uh, a big thing this week a milestone we hit was on twitter i was super impressed with um the engagement and everything on on twitter this last week especially you know super bowl sunday for that matter we uh have over 1100 followers now as of as of this morning so thank you for helping us hit our milestone of a thousand before we get to the, the state tournaments, the district and state tournaments. So if you haven't followed us on Twitter, go ahead and do so at ID underground SN. But as you guys know, our bread and butter is Instagram. Okay. That's where you're going to see the highlights on the Instagram stories. That's where you're going to see most of our posts and uh, see all the content that we're providing you guys, the highlight reels and everything um, that we're breaking down. So go to at Idaho underground sports on Instagram and check that out. All right. So big week for high school basketball. I was saying this the other day, guys, I'm excited about them. Like these four weeks, three, four weeks are like some of the most exciting times in, in high school sports and even in collegiate. Cause then you go into March madness right after this. So it's like, you have all this basketball stuff. You got tournaments from districts and state from both girls and guys. And it's just, it's a lot of excitement moving forward for the next couple of weeks. And then you have this big adrenaline dump afterwards, which sucks, but it's a, it's a blast up until then. Cause we get to see a lot of um, high quality basketball and um, some exciting things, but uh, we want to talk about a couple of things. So first things first, districts. Last week on the show, we talked about the district matchups that we had, uh, the play-in games and everything that was going to be happening. Well, Saturday was when we had our first couple of games for play-ins. Uh, and there, were some, there were some big games there. But going into Tuesday this week, we now have our first official round of districts, and we're going to break down the games that we have for them there. So, Ty, why don't you break down – on the other side of the bracket, playing at Meridian High School, who are teams are the four teams that are playing this week, uh, starting, I should say, tomorrow um, for the first round of districts? Yeah, so uh, over over at Meridian High School, which you'll, you'll be at, uh, we've got Timberline versus Meridian. They split the season series, so that's going to be really really good game. Um, and then also over there, we've got a Waihe versus um, Rocky, which heard there was a – an eventful evening the last time those two teams played. So yeah, you might, you might get a, an entertaining night over there. Um, and then on the other side of the bracket, um, where I'll be is over at Timberline high school where uh, we'll be catching uh, Skyview versus Eagle, which the last time those two teams played, it was actually a, a pretty close contest. I think up until the, the fourth quarter uh, Skyview was hanging tough with them. And I don't want to say that I see an upset coming, but you know, you never know. Like, uh, like Shane said, it's a crazy couple of weeks and you never know what you might get. Um, and then the, the final game over there will be um, Centen and uh, Mountain View, which that's going to be a doozy. Um, I mean, we, we were just t- touching on it a little bit before the show. You guys were, you know, kind of leaning Mountain View's way, but after what they just did to them, I'm going to have a hard time uh, picking <laughs> the Mavs over uh, Centen after that. So we'll, we'll see what happens, though. Um, Really going to be four great games, so I'm excited for it. Now, with that, I want to ask real quick, AJ, last week on the show, you talked about you, – you asked us who are some of your bracket busters, right? right. And Ty and myself kind of agreed that Centennial, uh, we felt like while they were the up-and-down roller coaster team, we did feel like they had the talent to be able to to make some, some noise in the tournament uh, when it came to districts and then potentially getting into state. You mentioned Skyview. 
do you still stand by that? Do you think Skyview has the opportunity, I guess, maybe this first round against Eagle to make some noise? Um, or do you still see them as your bracket buster, even if they don't get past Eagle? Uh, I know I know Eagle, you know, would have probably rather and played somebody else. I think Skyview is a team that, you know, has some younger guys that have developed, got more confidence. Um, I mean, if you look at their roster, they've got a handful of guys that are that are confident basketball players who can play guys that we know, you know, Max Kupfer's having a good season. Sean Murphy, you know, has been playing his best basketball lately. Christian Collins, obviously one of my top freshmen is Jace Allen. They've got a bunch of guys that, that can hoop. And, and it seems like they're coming together lately. They were beating Eagle at half. Like Ty was saying last time they played, I don't, I just, I don't think, I think Eagle's going to be ready. Eagle senior loaded Donovan Jones after that loss to Meridian, um, from what we've seen and what I've heard has, has flipped a switch. He's so locked in right now. Um, and I, I don't see that happening. I think depending on who wins that Centennial Mountain View game, uh, I think Skyview could give themselves a chance to win a game. And then if you win two games in this tournament, you essentially get to, to state. Um, I think they could give themselves a chance. Yes. But uh, I've got Eagle in that first round game. Uh, but yeah, that's a team that that could surprise surprise somebody at some point, possibly. Yeah, Skyview you can always hoop. We 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 saw that the other day last week. Um, I was actually really surprised with how they showed out. So like, that's why I was thinking of that question because they have looked pretty good the last couple of weeks, and they have certain certain teams they match up with really well. It's it's an odd thing, but Skyview does have that little matchup problem where they come out there and they're gritty and they can get stuff done. So I'm just looking forward to seeing what they do now. Real quick, to remind you guys, again, if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram because we will be at the tournaments. Like Ty said, I'll be covering at least the first game on Tuesday uh, for Meridian and, um, goodness, what am I trying to say? Meridian and Timberline. And then Ty will be over at Timberline High with the other games that he was talking about earlier. But the, you'll be able to find that. Sorry, I am sick. Just so you guys know, that's why I'm squeaking. All right, I'm coming off of the sickness. So anyway, that's not just my normal squeak. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just had a baby. I, we we got to talk about that. Dad of three now, little baby girl in uh, London. So yes. you, you've been getting no sleep. So it's yeah. all good, bro. I'm sleep deprived. I see. Here's the thing. I'm just going to say this. I've never drank alcohol, but I, I I assume this is probably what it's like. Because <laughs> like I'm like seeing things that aren't there. So I'm just going to say that right now. So kids, stay off that because the sleep deprivation ain't no joke. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. So like, I'm literally like I'm I'm saying things that I don't even know what I'm saying. So, no, you're right. Baby London's here. We got three kiddos now, and uh, we're just adapting to the life of playing the zone defense. So it's fantastic. <laughs> but uh, just just a reminder of following us on Instagram, guys, so that we can get you the, the, the coverage that you want to see. Follow us. Our Instagram stories is where those highlights will be living on the night of the game. So you guys can get you know the game footage and see which players are doing what things. All right. Now, here's the – I said earlier, we wanted to get some stuff off our chest. Um, it's funny. If, for those who are listening – and you're, you're watching this, you might understand who the dominant personalities in this group kind of are. Last night, AJ was posting some things on his own page, and, and it, it would be no surprise to most of us that, you know, AJ is kind of the dominant personality, and he's got some feelings towards this, which we all do, but I want, I, I appreciate AJ for being willing to speak about these things, and <laughs> this particular topic is the Max, Max Preps rankings. Um, a little controversy, if you will, when it comes to the rankings, and uh, I'm going to let AJ kind of break down and, and get this started. And we want to educate you. The whole idea of this is to show you guys how Idaho runs things in regards to the state tournament. We have districts right now. And people might say, well, however you do in districts determines how you're going to do in state. But that's not the case in Idaho. And that's what we're here to actually break down for you. So I'm going to let AJ kind of break it down. Um, and I will say this. <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say the rankings that Max Preps has for 5A currently. And I'll go through the first 12 teams. That they have. They have Lake City at one, Owyhee at two, Coeur d'Alene at three, Madison at four, Eagle at five, Lewiston six, Rigby seven, Meridian eight, Mountain View nine, Timberline 10, Centennial 11, and Highland 12. And then AJ is going to kind of explain. Obviously, all those teams can't make it to state, and we'll explain that in a second, but the rankings do matter. So, AJ, take it away. What are your thoughts here, man? All right. My well, first thought is is that the, the district tournaments are irrelevant with the rankings. The rankings are set. These are the final rankings. So now we look at how teams do at their district tournaments and based on who gets in. So the SIC 5A, and I believe it's the same for, for 4A. 
the SIC, no, it's a little different for a, the SIC gets four team, four and a half. The East gets two teams and the North gets one and a half. It's all based on the size of your league. So let's say Lake city goes from up North and back East, we're anticipating Rigby and Madison. Um, and then whoever finishes second up North, whether that's Coeur d'Alene or Lewiston, who both have the ability to potentially win that district tournament, they go to a play in game. Wh- whoever's second up North goes to a play in game. Um, against whoever is fifth in the SIC. So in a nutshell, that's that's how that works. But my, my problem is this, is why don't we take the district tournament into account? Because at this point, I'm going to talk about Eagle. Uh, Eagle for me, not only on the 5A ranking, but on the overall ranking where they rank every boys basketball team in the state. I've, I've got it up right here. And it goes Lake City 1, Lapway, Hillcrest, Owyhee, Coeur d'Alene, Marsh Valley, Pocatello, Madison, Jerome, Century, North Fremont, and then Eagle. Um, that's absurd. That's absurd. It's absolutely insanity to, to put some of those, especially smaller school teams. Lapway is different. Lapway may be the best team in the state. That, that's, a, that's a different type of group over there. But when we're talking about Marsh Valley and North Fremont and, and teams like that, putting them above the, the 5A SIC district, not district, league champions the team that won the league outright as the league champs is is incredible is it absolutely incredible it makes no sense but why are they doing that can you explain to us like why that's even the case like we know it's absurd but how do these i cannot explain down- that to you oh because i cannot explain that to you hence my problem if i could explain it to you and i understood it and it made sense we wouldn't be having this conversation but because it's so irrational it's it infuriates me and I think everybody's probably able to tell. And, and the Eagle guys are my guys, so it makes it – it even enhances it even more. But I will say this. Oh, why he should be the, the SIC district – or excuse me, the SIC league champions before the district tournament. Oh, why he had one league loss, Eagle had two. But since the SIC wants to be a soccer-oriented league and do this soccer scoring with – if you beat them, it's one point. If you beat them, it's two, it's two points. If you tie somebody, you get ten points. Whatever they're doing – it makes no it makes no sense. And so why he with one loss is the two seed and Eagle with two losses is the one seed. That's a whole nother conversation. That's done wrong as well. It should be based on losses. That's one plus one is two for me. OK, it, it, it's coming across as one plus one is three. It's just not making any sense. And so anyway, Eagle has three losses. OK, they've lost to Meridian twice and they've lost to Lake City, who's number one by two. Okay, but they beat number two Hawaii and they beat number three Coeur d'Alene and they smacked Coeur d'Alene, but 20. But Coeur d'Alene has four losses and they're higher than Eagle. And Eagle's the SIC champions and Eagle beat them and they beat number two Hawaii. And they have the same record as Hawaii. So why aren't they higher than Hawaii? Listen, we all agree that Hawaii's probably the team to beat here right now with the way they're playing ever since that loss their weapons, their younger players' development. You know, Harrington's been there, done that. He's coming off a state championship last year. Uh, why he's scary, okay? I don't think they shouldn't be there. My problem is why is Eagle not third? Why is Coeur d'Alene sitting at third? And they're just not that team. I mean, in, in my opinion, they may shut me up. They may they may just shut everybody up, and then I'll never talk again. And every, that'd probably be good for everybody. But at this point – having Centennial even below Timberline, Meridian, and Mountain View is insane because Centennial's 4-0 and finished higher than all three of those teams except Meridian in, in, in league. They beat Timberline by 22. They beat Meridian by 15, and they beat Mountain View by 4 and by 30. But they're ranked lower than all of them, so they're most likely, if they get in, they get to go play Lake City. That's That's – it's just there's certain parts about this that just it doesn't make much sense. And we're not going to be able to get an answer on why it is what it is. And and I understand some losses are better than others, but there is absolutely no reason at all for the SIC league champions who have lost to Lake City and Meridian twice. Meridian, the defending champions. Meridian was has three league losses. A why he has one. Eagle has two. Meridian was right there. I don't think we realize how close meridian was they lost the game early in the season to timberline at home by three which is what makes this first round district matchup so interesting because they just beat them at timberline at the buzzer on a three by brock vogel but regardless like 
that that's a really good team that we knew was going to come along and all of a sudden boom here they are three league losses you know they smacked eagle at eagle and then they they went to timberline toughest place to win in the league in my opinion and found a way to win that game so they're rolling right now too and and so those are good losses for eagle in my opinion they they don't match up well so there's no reason my point there's no reason for the sic which is the best league probably the sic league champion to have to beat Madison, Lake City, and Hawaii to win the state tournament in three days. You have to beat those three teams in three days. I know you've got to beat everybody to win it. But when there's a when you have to play back to back to back days and you and Madison travels better than anybody, that is going to be an extremely emotional game if that game happens. Then you got to go beat Lake City, who who is them and Hawaii are, are the two favorites. That's probably the best team in the state, maybe overall, besides Hawaii. And then then you got to go beat Hawaii. Who, who you're just who you're probably going to play in the district championship game the week before it, it's just it's garbage for me I don't like it it doesn't work for me I'm an eagle guy this year too I want the Mustangs to win it so like I said it enhances this but if it was somebody else I, I would be saying the same thing so I love to, to, add, to add to that exact point I wanted to bring this up for anyone watching that knows the eagle is you know close to AJ's heart we're seeing the same treatment for Middleton as well so it's not it's not just eagle uh for me, Middleton is absolutely getting 100% disrespect. I think they've got him at fifth in 4A with their one loss on the season coming from Eagle. So, and that adds to Eagle's disrespect because they're viewing that one loss as putting a team at the fifth spot, the defending state champs. So to me, it's not just Eagle for anyone watching and saying, oh, AJ's got his Eagle goggles on again. It's not that. It's uh, It doesn't make sense. And I think it, I mean, I, ultimately, I can tell you right now that they are not factoring in who the regular season league champ is. So while that should factor in, they're not. So while I get your argument on that, that's clearly not being viewed. So I, I get – I'm just trying to play a little de- devil's advocate and see both yeah. sides. So they're clearly not factoring that in, though. So Yeah, I no, I, I agree. And, and, and to touch on Middleton – you're right. It does add to the disrespect for Eagle that Middleton lost to Eagle and and they defending champs with most of those guys back. Talmud Stuckey steps in when his brother departs and fills in nicely and is probably a first team all conference guy. They're just as good, if not better than last year, potentially. And they're they're down at fifth and they may have to, depending on how things shake out, they may have to play Hillcrest in, in the semis. And if for I mean, and that's 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 tough, man. Like they shouldn't be on the same side of the bracket. Just like, I, I don't know. I, I just think there, there needs to be more reasoning behind like, what is this? Cause when yeah, you look at the an, head explanation, head, an explanation is 1000% needed Yeah, because it, it, it's not detailed on their report. And for me, I mean, no disrespect to max preps, but I, I finally saw their first employee at a game this last week. So they're not there hands on seeing these teams play. Yeah, I, I do know that that there are relationships and there's a lot of political things that going on. And I know people are going to have a problem me saying that. I don't care. People know people. There are relationships and all that type of crap that goes on. OK, I've been out here for five years. I've seen it at every level. It happens. And I've had coaches say, oh, yeah, my guy at Max Preps or I know this dude at, at Max Preps and he's telling me this and he's telling me like, bro, what? Like what? First off, don't tell me that. Second off. That makes me want to rip my hair out. That is absolutely ridiculous. It, it has nothing to do with the kids and what they're earning and what they've worked for and how this should actually. So for me, hearing stuff like that, it makes me even more like, why are we paying attention to this? Why are we doing that? Like, let us do it. We'll do it for you guys. I mean, you finally got, you know, a media outlet out here that, you know, hey, we'll do it. We want to do it. We have an understanding of what's going on and the players and the coaches. And I mean, not all the way around, right? Max preps. I'm not saying they do a horrible job that they do. This is great. It's great. But th- there's, you've got to be, there has to be more to it. There's got to be more understanding because the understanding clearly is not there. And, you know, I think it could, it could make or break a team winning a state championship potentially or not. Just like that play last night on the Super Bowl that, that missed uh, offensive pass interference call could have lost the Rams a Super Bowl where T Higgins grabbed Ramsey's face mask and pulls him to the ground, catches it, touchdown, first play of the the second half. If you miss something like like that, it could make or break the potential for a team to 
win a title after all the work that's put in, the blood, sweat, and tears. There's so much more that goes into it that that causes me to get emotional. I know, I know, I know where Shane stands on that one. Oh, dude. You get to state, you got to go win. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. Which I, I get it. I see both sides. I, I, I do see both sides. Here's the thing that I keep, I, I keep thinking, for one, because, like Ty said, there's no explanation here from Mac. Like, we don't – the point system's hard to break down. I don't – sometimes you could just say, oh, it's probably just made up. No one's ever, like, actually questioned this to figure out what are – how are we getting these points? How is it all being determined? And where are they getting the rankings? It reminds me of the BCS system in college football. It really does. And as a Bolitnikoff Award voter myself, I can tell you guys 100% fact. This is facts. And I've talked to Coach Zach Smith from Ohio State University. He said the exact same thing when it comes to rankings and talking about all this stuff. They don't – no one's watching the games. I can assure you, as a Blitnikoff Award voter, and I have no problem saying this, they send us out as voters from a national perspective. They send us out the voting every single week, and you just check a box. They tell you what the names are, and you just check a box. There's nothing saying, hey, you have to watch these guys play. Here's their stats, and here's it. And that's why you get a lot of stat watchers as an analysts in the, in the game because they just see stats. They have no context to the games. They have no idea what's going on, what these teams are actually doing, who was playing in that game, who wasn't playing in that game. There's so much context that goes behind sports. And so you get a Blitnikoff Award voter, which or an award, which is the best college football wide receiver in the nation. It's one of the biggest awards out there. They win this award, and I'm sitting there looking at them. I'm like, there's so many people here voting that have no idea what any of these other guys had. No, Khalil Shakir from from Boise State didn't even make it. Like it's like they don't even know. They're looking at all these these things, and they just check a box. They don't even have to watch the games. I feel like this kind of is a similar situation. There's a lot of connections there. People say this. They they hear about this one person or this one team. And they don't really have the context behind it. So my question to it, what's the future changes? So like we, we know that there's a problem and that's part of like we identify it. And this is not just this year. I hope everybody understands this. Just two years ago, Meridian makes it to state for the first time in like 14 seasons. They get matched up with Rocky Mountain in the first round of the state tournament, which was a uh, if, if, if we want to rewind the clock, that's blasphemous, dude. That was blasphemous. Meridian was a 20-win team. They got matched up with the best team to arguably ever come through the state of Idaho for that matter. Rocky was amazing that year they ended up losing in the semifinals but they should have just went through everyone um and well and meridian finished second in the sic yes, behind them SIC. that year so the one and two seed from the same league playing the first round against each other yeah just like the girls tournament that we will yep. touch on that yep. you have an opportunity to take the four sic teams and match them up against the four other teams coming in and you're not going to do that i think it's uh bora and timberline play yeah Two, and then, two of the top three SIC teams are going to have to play, and then the two top uh, teams in the East have to play each other first round. So Thunder Ridge Crazy. and Rigby play each other, and like mix, like freaking mix it up, dude. Yeah. Like you got to be kidding. I mean, it's, and when you look at each team's seasons too, like it's so easy to just switch one team. You literally just have to switch Bora and uh, I think uh, not Thunder Ridge, but uh, Rigby. Rigby, yeah, yeah. All you have to do. <laughs> Crazy. So, so here's one thing um here's one thing i want to ask on twitter there was a, a conversation about this like how do we change up anything for that matter and people ex started talking about a committee potentially having a committee for doing it or they talked about expanding the state tournament to have in certain because there's some messed up stuff just in getting people to state in the especially the 4a level like we've talked about this before there's three of the top teams in the entire state of Idaho in the same exact district. One of them will be able to make the state, which is blasphemous as well. So, like, there's teams that are going to miss out. That it's just stupid because of seedings. And so, people have been talking about how do you expand it? How do you do you combine districts? Do you allow more teams to get into play-in games? And how do you navigate travel? What do we do in the future? Is that something that we're looking at right now, or is that something we need to discuss throughout the rest of the off season to propose? Well, I mean, I've seen a lot of the, re the responses on, on Twitter. And to me, a 12-team state tournament is, A, a no-brainer. Uh, that, that's going to solve a lot of issues, in my opinion. Uh, you got district, SIC district tournament, which technically the first round, the play-in games, that's not, you know, technically part of it, right? Yeah. But you still get all 12 yeah. teams included. Yeah. Like it is, but it's not. Uh, so all 12 SIC teams will get a chance, you know, to play in a tournament, but we can't get 12 at the state tournament. To me, adding those four teams would help a lot with that. Uh, and then the case for, you know, Preston Century and Pocatello, why do we have a three team league? <laughs> to me, that, that is, doesn't make any sense. That like, is the issue. Why well, do we have that? And why well, haven't we fixed we, that? We can have a 12 team league here. 
in the SIC, but we have an eight team league and a three team league in the East. Yeah. Like it's for travel yeah. purposes, I'm sure, right? Travel and, and size of schools or something, but can't we why, combine something? Why can't you combine those, those teams with uh, Hillcrest and, Hillcrest, and Blackfoot. Shelby and Blackfoot? Yep. Like, why can't you make a bigger league and give everybody that would be the you, best, that would be the best league in the state this year? 100%. And you can schedule wise and travel wise, you can keep your schedule relatively. They're still playing those teams. There's yeah. no, there's no real difference. They're still playing each other. Yeah. So I, I don't. It, to me, a hundred percent. You are right. You are definitely 100% making right. it making it hard for no reason. And I don't, I don't get it. But uh, we're new here. <laughs> yeah. We, Sorry, guys. We're, we're new. <laughs> we're new, and we're and, and we're fresh always. But. We, I mean, it's not hard. It's like, why are we so lost in this? This needs to be fixed. This needs to be handled. There's, there needs to be real conversations about this, and it's really not difficult. But to have a, a the the best player in the state, if you look at a recruiting standpoint, who has the best offer in the state maybe right even now? The, maybe even the two best. Yeah, exactly. One, that, that, one or both of them isn't going to make the state tournament. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, that's the point. Like, get the best players to where bright lights it's our job to showcase them it's our job as adults to showcase these athletes as best we can to help them reach their their dreams and their goals and we can't figure out how to do that because it's not because it's because it's not about the kids and i'm not trying to hey listen i'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings but actions speak louder than words sometimes and just what i've seen is most of the time it ain't about what's best for the kids it's what's easy it's what can we do the abs- absolute minimum of and and just to just to create a thing but guess what idaho it's time to catch up you need to catch up because you're going to continue to get called out not just by us but all these young trainers out here all these young coaches that understand and have a problem with it too idaho is on the come up idaho is going from being in, in older more behind state to a more up and coming state with the growth out here with things like what we're doing more and more of this is happening you know shout out to tello talk all, all, all these kids that are starting to see what we're doing and want to do it from content creation to podcasts and whatnot. It's just, it's a beautiful thing, but let's not, let's not sit back in the corner in, in, in the dark and not do something about it. So I think we do need to talk about it. And I think people are listening, but for us to not be able to see potentially century Pocatello and then Preston, Preston is a very good team also who's won for the last five, four, a state titles except for, and they were in the title game last year and lost to Middleton. So they've been in the last five title games. They, they still might make it. And then Bowie, who's a boy, who has a Boise state offer, which should interest everybody here in the Valley. And then uh, Malik Carwell, who's a top 25 freshman in the United States over at I century know. who has a Texas tech offer. And Texas tech was in the national championship game uh, two years ago. So that he may be the best player in the state right now. He has the best offer him and Campbell, Campbell has that USC offer, and they're balling this year. We aren't going to be able to, to see these kids play and highlight these kids. I know it's their job to get there, but if there are those guys, they will. To not give guys an opportunity and have to put Harwell out or Bowie out or Preston out, three of the top six max preps ranked teams in the 4A, only one's going to get there. We're not doing our job. I like that you you brought up that, I mean, this is a topic on our show right now because it's brought up to us constantly, whether it's in person, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on Instagram. This isn't just our opinions. I mean, you're hearing a lot of our opinions, but this is a discussion on the show right now because of how often it is brought up to us. So it's not just our own opinions on this. And I would like to say to that, if you guys are watching this right now on YouTube, Leave us some comments on what you guys think. I would love to hear it. And if we have listeners that are out of the state that maybe your state does something different, I don't know. Like, how does how does this work? I know California is like a train wreck, but it's also very well put together. But there's, I mean, you've got regionals, you've got air, there's a whole thing, but they figure it out, which is also oh, interesting to me. Most states probably don't have three team conferences, but yeah. I could be wrong. <laughs> very true. See, that's the thing. I, I just want to figure it out. If these states like California and Texas who have loads of like different regions and so forth to make it even, even into their state tourney, like go ask Keyshawn Liggins on how Texas works when it comes to like breaking down how they even make it to state. It's it's a journey. Like the whole state tournament is like a full season for them almost, it feels like, because you're trying to make it into regionals, you know, districts, regional state and everything. That's after a full season. So 
they figure it out. Why can't we? But I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So leave us a comment below and let us know what you guys think. Um, we did mention the, the girls rundown. And just as an FYI, shout out to Jason War. We've been communicating back and forth with him a little bit. He did say that, like, we just brought it up on the show about the girls situation. And I would love to do a little girls rundown as well because we've been getting some good coverage, especially from Ty and AJ last week, getting the, the coverage of the, the, the championship games and just the other, other district games that have been going on. Um, they are looking to change that. So this will be addressed after the season. Uh, Jason War has let us know that it will be addressed after the season in regards to like taking into consideration a district champion or like the district tournament in some capacity because what we just talked about with Ty and AJ said, the girls situation, which we'll get to again, um, is a disaster basically in, in state basketball. So let's do a little girls rundown though, guys, as we take a deep breath and we, we get to this next uh, segment, if you will, and we can break this down before we wrap up the show on the girls state because girls are, are starting up. Um, it's ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, we had some big games in the, we had a big game with the district championship that we had our crew over there with getting that all taken care of. So I'm going to start with Ty. Ty, you've been really big into the girls scene this, this year, given a lot of great coverage. And, uh, I want you to give us your insight on what's going down. Yeah. Well, first off, you just touched on district championship that we were all at Boise versus Timberline. Big shout out to the Boise brave. Uh, they came up with a, a, a Big time win over, uh, I mean, they're, they're the number one, number two seed in the state, but I, I, I'm going to give them the number one nod myself. Uh, Boise took down Timberline, um, ended up being a really great game, went to overtime. As a lot of you probably saw on our social media, Avery Howell absolutely balled out. She's also holding an offer from Boise State, so if you're not interested, I mean, that's, that's on you. Um, but she balled out with 23 rebounds, I think ended with 12 points. Uh, just her effort, you know, you, you might only score 12 points, but the, the final score was 44, uh, 38, I believe. So it, it was just her effort that really single-handedly lifted them over, uh, over Timberline. Uh, Ava Nelson, is that her name? Ella. Ella, Ella Nelson. She also had a really great game, a really good tournament for her. She's headed to LC State next year. So another, uh, local talent stand local. So fun to see these girls succeed and get that district championship win. Um, going into state, we now have our, our final eight teams, uh, starting off with number one, Lake city, number two, Timberline, number three, Thunder Ridge, who had a really quietly nice year in the East. Um, number four, post falls, number five, Boise, which that four or five matchup should be a good one. Uh, post falls won the play in game against Hawaii, uh, which really young Hawaii team, that was one game away from making the state tournament. So it'll be fun to see, you know, kind of how they progress over the next three or four years. Um, but as we wrap out the round out the last uh, three teams, we got Rigby at six, uh, Bora at seven and Rocky mountain snuck in, which to me is the biggest surprise of the tournament. They had a really big win over Eagle. Uh, I'm personally shocked. The Mustangs weren't able to find a way into the state tournament, but you know, sometimes that's just the way she goes. Um, but Rocky sneaks in. They got a tough matchup against Lake City round one. That'll be the first game on Thursday, followed by the Boise uh, Post Falls game and then Timberline versus Bora, which we kind of touched on it a little bit before the show. It's really unfortunate that Boise Timberline or excuse me, Timberline Bora have to play both SIC teams. And then we got Thunder Ridge and Rigby, both, both East teams. They all got to play round one. Uh, it's, I mean, to me, you got a six seed in Rigby and a seven seed in Bora. Let's just make a little switch. AJ agrees. He's got his hood on for this. Um, it's a, it's a simple switch. I mean, make, make these teams face somebody new, come, come down here. Don't not to play the same team you've been playing all season. Uh, t to me, I mean, again, just some, some clarification on why I guess, um, these standings are how they are, but, uh, Either way, going to be some really exciting matchups. Uh, for me, I've been saying it all season long, it's a, it's a Lake City versus Timberline destiny to me in the state championship. I think it's going to be a wolf showdown in the state title game. But we'll see. I mean, we just saw we saw Boise come up with a big win over Timberline. They could, they could easily come away with some wins on that side of the bracket. You know, likely we'll play Lake City in the next round. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fun one. Uh, I know I'll be there. Cherry Films will be there. And uh, 
not sure if you'll be able to make it at all. Guru, maybe a state championship Saturday night, but uh, it'll be a, a, a jam-packed uh, week for us. I, I know I'm, I'm hitting uh, ten games myself this week, so it'll be it'll be fun. No, for sure. Right. Ty's gonna be you, there. <clears throat> AJ's gonna be out of town this week, so unfortunately he won't be there. And I'm gonna do my best to try to make it. Um, as you guys know, we just had a kid in our family, so we're trying to, you know, she's less than three days old. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on here. But if I can get over there, um, I would love to be there as well to get the coverage for you guys. But Ty's going to be doing some some massive double, triple, quadruple duty over there, um, pulling the coverage for you guys. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, this this whole state experience for us, um, I'll just be real. I'm, I'm hoping that this year is a positive experience. Last year was kind of our, we dip in our toes in the water and stuff, and we've gained a lot more respect, and we appreciate all those who have supported us over the last year, well, last, I guess, six months um, since we really turned this network into something. But last year, we tried to figure that out. Um, and yeah, we just we just hope it's a, it's a better experience for us all. Um, and that's due in large part, I think it's going to be, and that's due in large part to you guys for supporting us. Um, the ADs, shout out to all the athletic directors whom we built relationships with this year. Shout out to everybody, all the fans and the students, you know, even, even the times when things have been, you know, rough and you guys share your opinions and so forth. We, we appreciate the engagement. We do. Cause that's, that means that we're all conversing about what we love, which is uh, high school athletics around the Valley. So we're looking forward to bringing you guys coverage during the state tournament. And uh, hopefully it's a good one for us all. And if for any reason it's not, we'll let you know. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> no, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the girls tournament because I don't think people realize how many division one basketball players are, are going to be there. And I, I'm just going off the teams that I know. I, I know Lake City's got some girls and whatnot, but, you know, Lauren McCall from Timberline, who had a great district championship game. She's going on a visit to Montana. She's a junior. She's going to continue to get looks. You know, Sophie Glancy is Northern Arizona, along with her teammate, Audrey Taylor. She's Northern Arizona. That's D1. And then you've got uh, Jaden McNeil, who's going to Eastern Washington to play with uh, Jaleesa Lawrence from Meridian last year, who's having a great year. And then um, Miss Rodriguez over there, coach's daughter, uh, shout out local Puerto Rican. His daughter has, has a University of Portland offer. I mean, there. And then, of course, Avery Howell has the Boise State offer as a sophomore. That that 23 uh, rebound game was one of the most impressive things I've seen all year. I mean, she dict they she kept Boise in it and dictated a lot of the tempo with her her dominance on the glass. And mind you, Sophie Glancy is a Division One big. And then Allie Cox is, has improved dramatically. She's one of the better rebounders I've seen this year. And she's a big girl, uh, a post as well for Timberline. And, and Howell just dominated the glass as a wing. So she's, she's impressive. She's going to continue to get looks. Um, and then I don't know if any, any Rocky girls ha have any looks, but that's a handful of D1 girls right there. Yep. Uh, and that's then, very rare. I, I, yeah. I didn't even touch on Rocky, but – Marley Reed put in a, a really good, really good game for the Grizzlies and helped punch their ticket to state. If they if they want a shot at you know upset in Lake City, she's she's the one that's got to pop off. Yeah, no, and and so there's a bunch of girls who can hoop, and I I think the girls' game is is definitely growing out here. I enjoyed every game I went to this year. Uh, I'm glad I got to go to the district championship. I'm I'm upset that the girls' state tournament is this week. I thought it was the week before the guys. I feel like that's usually what it is. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so I'm going to be gone, but I will be all over the network following and whatnot. But yeah, there's a lot of hoopers. Like you said, Ellen Nelson is LC State. That's a really good school. And then Ashley Banks is Southern Utah for Boise. Yeah. So Boise's got essentially three high-level college hoopers as well. It's going to be a fun tournament. Um, but yeah, just the whole playing a team in your conference in the first round has got to change. I understand in the, the five, a, there could be five SIC teams that get in and two teams are going to have yeah. to play each other yeah. that if it has to happen like that, whatever, but if it doesn't have to happen, let's, let's create the best possible bracket situation. Even, even, you know, just for entertainment value. Cause a lot of these teams, like Ty was saying, you play a team four, five, six times, and you go to the state tournament in the first round, you play that team again. Yeah. And and I know uh, I saw comments from those schools out east, so Thunder Ridge and Rigby. And it, you know, obviously you don't want to go play Timberline round one, but a lot of their comments were that they don't want to play this team again, like play each other again, that they would rather go, you know, play a different team round one. But yeah, it's, you know. it's tough. But Go, go check out the girls' tournament. It's going to be a great tournament. A lot of hoopers. 
Um, it's a toss up on who's going to win it. I, I can't believe Coeur d'Alene, who had beaten Lake City and then beaten Timberline this year, the top two seeds, Coeur d'Alene didn't make it. So that league up north must have been something, man. Some ballers out there, too. That, Like, like AJ said, I don't think people in Idaho realize this, so appreciate what you have in front of you for this next week. That's a lot of college hoopers. That's high-quality basketball. Go check it out. Ty's going to be providing the coverage. Make sure you are following us, like I said, on Instagram, at Idaho Underground Sports. Go check it out. That's where the coverage will be. That's where we're going to be doing most of our stuff. We'll also be on Twitter trying to do our best to get some updates out to you guys throughout the whole entire thing. But the highlights and everything live on Instagram. So go do that. We're also on Facebook too, but make sure you're following us all there. We want to make sure that you guys have the coverage that you deserve as fans. We're doing our best to provide the in-depth stuff, the fun stuff, the highlights, and just kind of giving the exposure to these athletes that they deserve. So we'll get you the, the coverage you want, and then we'll be coming to you next time with another recap. Uh, next week, we'll see if AJ can join us or not. He'll be out of town. We'll try to we'll figure out the, the schedule for it all, but uh, we'll, we'll get you guys more content. So we appreciate you guys tuning in. On behalf of Ty from Boise Sports Talk, AJ from EBC Media, and myself, from the Game Time Guru, we are the Idaho Underground Sports Network, and we'll talk to you next time. Tie that Wolves jersey, baby.